Hello pilots, welcome back to Flying with Overkill F-18C Hornet. Today we're going to be taking a look at the AGM-84E SLAM missile. The SLAM is a service-to-ground TV-guided precision missile. It is a cruise missile, so you can get a ton of range out of it. Instead of using a rocket booster, it uses a turbine engine, so it gets, uh, gets some really good range. We can fire it from about 60 miles away from our current altitude, about 30,000 feet. Um, let's get after it and see what it's all about. So first off, you can see that we have the SLAM on stations um, 8, 2, 7, and 3. We have the data link on the center line. The data link is required in order for the SLAM TV mode to work. Um, so you want to make sure you have that available. And then we also have a targeting pod. Master arm is set. Let's put us in the air-to-ground mode. We'll go ahead and actually bring the HSI up here. You can use the um, air-to-ground radar, um, but uh, I don't recommend it at this time. The um, air-to-ground radar is obviously still very much in refinement, so um, we'll obviously take a look at it at a later time once it becomes a little bit more reliable. All right, so first thing we need to do is select our SLAM. Once doing so, let me go ahead and actually move the camera in a little bit. There we go. All right, so looking working our way around the block here you can see we have our current alignment timing we are looking for seven and a half minutes just like with the jade jsow and jade am you can see alignment quality here you're looking for zero one good right now it's zero nine unstable you have your uh, attack mode this is pre plan you have target of opportunity um, you're gonna see a lot of this stuff is actually very similar to jsow and jade am um, flt or flight mode you can see these references here this is the altitude at which the cruise missile will travel at um, all the way down to the target area, whether it takes a low profile, a high profile, or, or as it's currently set in between. So I think for this first strike, we'll go low. And then you have your fusing. You just have off and instant, so we're going to go ahead and select it to make sure we set instant. Distance here, this is the time or distance to the target location until the camera comes on. So at 10 nautical miles away from the target location, the camera will then come on. Okay, and you can change that, and I'll show you how in just a minute. Um, the STP, I don't know what this is for. I wasn't able to find anything that really um, definitive in the documentation that told me what it meant. So if you guys know, by all means, uh, let us know in the comments below. Um, your time to maximum range. This will always remain above 99 until um, you breach 99 seconds. Okay, so once you get under 99 seconds, this will start counting down. As of right now, it will remain at 99 because we don't have a target area selected. All right, and then you have your step button obviously allows you to step through the different stations and then finally the slam display page up here you have station eight again your timing your pre-plan one slam selected your alignment quality which is currently showing zero one good which i don't think is accurate but um let's find out here it might be well it is showing zero two good here so in the display page don't trust the zero one okay and then you have your mission information, which we'll get to in a second. Release type, I see no reason to change this yet. Uh, so we're not gonna go over that. Your HSI declutter, we'll go over that later if I remember to, I always forget. Um, this is like my third time recording this one. And then we have your scan your step, allowing you to step through the stations. And UFC, which allows you to change that distance. So let's go ahead and select that. And we're gonna go ahead and set it at, let's do 18 miles. So 18 miles away, the camera will be available and it will start transmitting to the data link. All right, now let's go over to our mission page, and this is where we're going to start entering some of the information. Um, I'm only going to worry about what we need for today's purposes, so all we're going to be using today is the target UFC, which is just like Jade, Sam and Jade Owl, where we need to enter in our precise coordinates. So we can see that we have position elevation just like we've seen before. So let's uh, first get us some targets out there. Now this will work with either precise coordinates on a target or um, it will work if you are just having a general area. Obviously the more precise you can get the better. So let's go ahead and strike these guys out here. So let's pick this uh, SA6 search radar or search targeting radar is what it is. And then I use the scratch pad but if you don't have that available you know um, use with pen and paper whatever you got. Now what we're looking for down here, right now we have uh, degrees, minutes, decimal minutes, and we want degrees, minutes, seconds, decimal seconds. So we're going to use left, alt, and Y, 
and that's what we're looking for. And if that first digit is ever cut off, you can find it up here as well. Just move your mouse. I mean, you have to go really far before that first digit changes. Okay. <clears throat> so I'm going to hit Control, Shift, and X to bring up my scratch pad. This thing is really handy. I'll try to remember to put a link in the description below for you guys. Um, but then we're just going to copy that down. So 4, 3, 2, 9, 4, 5, 7, 3, and then 3, 9, 5, 8, 2, 1, decimal, 1, 8. All right, so I don't worry about typing north or east. When you're in the Caucasus map, it will always be north and east. There's no point where you would enter a west or a south. So little tip there. All right, so I'll just leave this up for a minute. We're going to go ahead and go to our F1 menu here. Go back to the cockpit. Go to target UFC, position. Start with our latitude, 2 for north. And we are doing 4, 3, 2, 9, 4, 5. Enter with a 7, 3 to top it off. Longitude, easting, 3, 9, 5, 8, 2, 1. Enter, 1, 8, enter. And then cycle our target UFC, go to elevation, feet, and 1069, dang it, 1069 was our elevation for that, if I remember correctly. Either way, it'll be close enough. And let's double check myself, because I would be at 1062, darn it. All right, let's go ahead and change that. So we're doing 1062. There we go. Okay. So, we're done with our scratch pad for the moment. Actually, I think we're done with it, period. Now, let's talk about what's up here on the HSI. So, you can see this large circle that we're already inside. This is the uh, time to maximum range barrier. So, once your aircraft crosses this barrier that's right here, um, you are able to fire the missile, and this is the critical zone, the target range, okay? I think once you enter that, you can't fire the missile more. It'll miss, um, unless you point the nose way down. But uh, anyway, so let's go ahead and go back to our return here. And we now we're going to hit the data link 13. And you can see this weapon box came up on here on the bottom. We're going to select it. And how this works is this got a selection for each slam on station. So and it, it reads with the same way we see it here. So if you were to take this guy and turn it horizontally, it would match up accordingly. So this is station 8, station 2, station 7, station 3. So we want station 8 to start with. And now you can see we've got an in range in 151 seconds. Um, time to service, I think. Don't quote me on that. I don't remember what that DTS stands for. Um, but basically it's 151 seconds until the camera comes on. Okay? And so we've got everything else set. We have our coordinates. We have, we're on the right pre-planned mode. Now we are ready to let her loose. So let's go ahead and unlock our camera. And we'll go ahead and come out of active pause. And now when you fire the missile, you're going to get some serious pull on the wing, so get ready for it. We're about to take a major dip to the left here. So, missile's away. There's that dip. I'm coming off the autopilot. Start correcting. Now, the cool part about the data link pod is it has an antenna in both in the front and the rear so if we need to if we get up too close we can turn the aircraft around and set the uh, antenna to the rear antenna which I'll show you guys in a minute so another cool way to see um, what our distance to the uh, target is or I should say to the camera is to bring your stores page up on another menu and you can see we're just about one minute away let's zoom in on that make sure I'm right a little over a minute, 78 seconds, 75 seconds. All right. Back that back out. You don't want to get too far away from the missile. Obviously, just like anything else, the further away you get, the more the signal gets degraded. Now, to bring up the camera for the data link, what we're going to do is unbox slam. So by unchecking that, there it is. And you can see the timer there. But this is why you bring up that second stores page because it's almost impossible to see. Now the only other thing we need to do is hit sensor select a left because we're on the left DDI. And you guys can sort of see the diamond popped up there indicating it's our sensor of interest. Once the camera goes active, the camera will obviously display on this screen. And then we'll be able to use the TDC SLU on our HOTAS to control the, uh, the camera. Because essentially control the missile. And then this button here is where we would select the aft antenna. That's what the A antenna stands for. 
But for here, we're just going to wait, and there's our camera coming to life. Now, I'm not going to touch the um, uh, camera yet, or the slew. So let me show you what's happening. I'm going to go back into an active pause for a second. The missile should still be traveling. The missile is going low to approach the target. Okay, but it's not in what's called its terminal phase yet. Right now it's still just on the approach. So what we're seeing on the camera here is not the target area. If you can see, the camera is actually looking at the water. Okay, and we're going to see the camera change position here in a few minutes. And then obviously these outside carrots are your field of view, just like you see on the Maverick. So we can type our field of view button, zoom in a lot closer. Alright, so I've got a missile tracking me. You can see the missile, watch the slam. The camera's getting a little foggy there. And so what I'm going to do here, because I'm turning away from it, is I'm going to switch to the aft antenna. You can see that picture cleared up again. And now it's going to its terminal phase. I know it's a little hard to see there, guys. But there's our target area right there. And then if I want to, I can steer it. And we're going to put it right on point. So that antenna is going to swallow this missile. Boom! Shack. Okay, so that was kind of a really cool scenario that everything worked out there. So you guys saw, I know we were with the sun behind us, that new glare effect is just absolutely terrible. Um, I really hope ED does something about that. I get what they were trying to do, but gosh, it makes it so hard to see. Um, a little too realistic for office simulation here, but you know, what the hell. Um, so now we're gonna get some distance out again. But uh, anyway, that was a really cool scenario. So you guys got to see how the missile was set up for pre-planned mode, how we fired it. We got in close because then we were, you know, obviously you need to stay within range, like I said, of the data link. Um, I've seen about 30, 40 miles. It really starts to get degraded pretty quickly. You start getting a lot of that static. But then as the missile was approaching the target, um, you know, obviously we were attacked by the surface-to-air system. I was able to turn and run. As I turned around, the camera got super static -y, was really starting to break up. So we switched to the aft antenna here, and then the picture cleared back up. I was able to continue running away from the area. All right, And then as the missile approached the target, you guys saw the target come into view, hopefully. And if you guys could tell, the crosshair was slightly off target. It wasn't quite on that uh, targeting antenna that we wanted it to be. So I was able to simply, because the uh, screen was our... Uh, sensor of interest, um, I was able to use my slew to move the crosshair right onto the target to where that antenna got to swallow an AGM-84. Alright, so now we're going to go ahead and bring it around again, and this time we're going to use target of opportunity mode, because pre-plan mode is pre-plan mode, there's nothing else for it now. Um, and this time we're just going to use the waypoint as our designation. So, here's what we're going to do. We're going to go to slam again, we can see station 2 is selected. Now, we do have to go through the timing process again. Okay, and if you want to change your distance, you need to change it again, and you need to change the flight mode if you choose. All right, so in this case, um, I'm going to go ahead and set our distance. We're going to go to the JDAM display, go to UFC, change our distance, brighten that up as much as I can, and I'm going to go back to 18. All right, and then we will go to mission and change it to target of opportunity. And then what we're going to do is select waypoint one and do weapon designate. Okay, and we get all of our information again. Now, the thing to remember about weapon designate when you waypoint, make sure that your waypoint has the elevation to the ground target, which mine does in this particular case. All right, so we're about 50 miles out from the target. I'm going to come back around. The 
other thing you need to make sure that you do that I have forgotten a couple times is go to your data link, make sure it's boxed, and select the correct slam. So there's the slam. We selected station two. I am flying like absolute dog crap. It's really the trimming on that missile, man. When those one of those missiles goes, it really takes a beating. It's a super heavy missile. A lot of trim required for it. It doesn't help that I actually don't have my rudder pedals under the desk at the moment, and I was too lazy to move them around, so... There, I said it, alright? You guys are just going to have to deal with that. Okay. So, oh, well, let's get better on target. That's pretty crappy. There we go. Now, so what we're going to do this time is we're going to fly to the target area, and then try to find a target as it comes in. Oh, and there's all that right trim I put into it. So the missile's away. Now, one of the things we're going to want to do right off the bat, I'm going to slow the aircraft down too, but we want to remove our slam and switch to the forward antenna. We still has a, have it as our sensor of interest. Go back to our stores page, and you can see we are 211 seconds until the camera comes on. We go to F6 missile approaching the Temple of Doom. And let's go ahead and speed up time here. This missile has been a ton of fun to learn so far. Um, honestly, I just started messing it with this morning. And uh, I really, really advise you guys to to give it some give it some time it's been seriously a lot of fun it's a really cool missile all right so we have our camera now the missile still pointing at the water but what I can do here if I want to is I can start pitching it up so there's the airfield so perfect example let's go ahead I'm gonna search over here for a second because I'm pretty sure if I put a system out here I think that's it right there Can't quite tell. Some of these guys are really hard to see, man. There it is right there. That's definitely one. We go to our missile we should see it turn yep it turned a little bit watch it be like a house or something or an ice cream shop pretty sure this is an SA3 site if not someone's gonna lose their Volkswagen but you see what I mean it's, it's very much like the Maverick it, it's and I think this is my issue with the walleye. The walleye, at least the last time I tried it, isn't near this smooth to use. Um, this is really handy. I mean, that waypoint that we selected, guys, is in the middle of the runway. Um, so I was able to fire it towards general direction, set the camera to come on in enough time where I still had time to maneuver it, and um, employ on target. And we want the radar. We don't care about the sight. So we're going to drill right in on that. You can see the missile bored in on it. Oh yeah, this guy's going to eat it. Shack! Boom! And you can see it took out the two supporting trucks that were next to it. And I know they were really close, but still. Oh, hello. We're down to 100 knots. Alrighty then. Oh, and now we're defensive on top of that. Well, look at it this way. If I get shot down, we'll have something fun to do because we'll restart. 
Come on, baby, get some speed. All right, we're flying perpendicular. Got our airspeed back up. This is the only problem with when I make these videos in the live training areas. I totally don't pay attention to the environment. I know, I'm a failure. What do you want from me? Okay, so we'll go ahead and get some distance out here. This is the other thing I don't pay attention to on tutorials is my fuel. Epic no-no. All right, so we're going to get some distance. Now let's go ahead and, just like we did before, bring the slam page back up. And this time... Uh, oh, Flare's already on. That's right. We're going to use our FLIR. Now I'm going to keep the weapon designate on because I want the... I'm going to bring the HSI up over here for the moment. And we'll uncycle it. Okay, cool. It was cycled. I just wanted to make sure. So this time we're going to get some distance. We're going to turn us around. We're going to stay in target of opportunity mode. So in this situation we're going to go ahead and... Go to TOO again. Now it's weapon designating because it's using the uh, waypoint. We Let's check our flight level. Let's do a high one. Okay, and then we've got our electronic fuse set, distance. Distance isn't as critical this time because we're going to use the targeting pod to find our target. Again, really cool missile. This thing's got a ton of options that make it easy. All right, 25 miles. Let's go a little bit further. Let's go ahead and extend out a little bit. I'm speeding up time a little bit. That should be good, especially by the time we turn around. All right, so we'll bring it around. I'm using my sensor select right to make my uh, TGP, the sensor of interest. I'm going to fly more or less perpendicular. The weapon or the TGP is on the left cheek. All right, let's see what we can find here. So I'm going to zoom in like crazy. We're way out there. Maybe too, uh, too far out to generate the camera image, but we'll see. I know where that is. We're only getting part of the camera view. That's water. I think I'm too far out yet, guys. Go back into wide field of view. Let's cycle target, go back to weapon. Yeah. All right. So I'll tell you what. Let me turn in a little bit here. All right, that'll make us, that'll give us something. So let's just find anything that's out here. What's this guy out here? A uh, truck. Maybe kind of messed up, hit it with a slam. Talk about overkill. Ah, see what I did there? All right, that looks like some sort of surface-to-air truck. We're still so far out, it's kind of hard to tell. Got a couple different radar dishes out there. There's another truck. Let's try seeing if we can get anything better. Ooh. That looks nasty. All right, I know you're an assault truck. All right, and we're gonna target designate and fire the slam. 
Now, I might have fired that at a way too bad of an angle there, but we'll see how it goes. And same as before, unbox the slam, make it our sensor of interest. Oh no, you know what I did? Let's see if this works. Ah, uh, what station was that? And this is what happens. I forgot to set it, so let's see if this works. So we're going to go UFC. I don't know if you can do this in flight. Do we get a timer? We did. Okay, cool. So if you ever forget to um, set up the data link prior to launch, like I just did. So what happened is, remember, we had to go to weapon and, and choose which station we wanted the data link to talk to before we fired the missile? Okay, if you ever forget to do that, and the big indicator to me was that we didn't have the um, this time to service or TTS, whatever it is, um, up on the screen. It wasn't there. So that was the giveaway right right off the bat, That and I didn't have this channel. Uh, the channel wasn't correct, excuse me. Um, and uh, so if you ever notice that you're not getting your, your TTS timer, it means that you have not told the data link to look at the correct station. So jump in real quick, determine what station was fired, and then switch it. Okay, never actually ran into that mistake before uh, and caught it early enough, so cool. Now you know you can change it during flight. So again, let's speed up time. I think we're going after Estrella, by the way. Uh-oh. I don't know why these missiles got a hate on me. I really don't. I'm a very friendly person. I'm not being mean to them. Okay. Don't worry, the missile's not going to get me. It's rockets off by now. Alright, so now you can see the TV's getting pretty screwed up there, so let's switch to the aft antenna. And that's why I put the target area off our stern. Yeah, jerks. Shoot at that. All right, let's pull the throttle back. And the missile's starting to dive down towards the target area again. It's coming off a little bit, so I'm moving it. And now let's watch Estrella die. Shoka. Sorry. Boom. And Shaq. All right, guys. So that is the AGM-84 Slam in a hand basket. I hope you guys enjoyed this. So you saw your pre-planned modes were just like the JSAM and JDAO. Or JDAO? JSAO. Um, you know, you... you, you Enter in your coordinates manually. You can figure that out on the ground if you choose. The cool thing about the pre-planned mode is you can select a waypoint um, or just a general area, and as long as you give yourself enough distance for the camera to turn on, as you saw me do, you, you can actually steer the missile into where you want it to go. Uh, same thing, target of opportunity. Target of opportunity, I just simply use that waypoint designation to fly the missile over the area. Once I got, Once the camera came on, I gave myself enough time, and I steered it probably uh, 15 to 30. I would say 25 degrees off its actual course line and still manage to strike the target. So, I mean, you can really steer the heck out of it. And then the final way, you know, using the targeting pod. So it's got a lot of really neat ways to employ it. Um, that antenna, being able to switch to the aft antenna is a lifesaver, as you were able to witness. That was the reason I kept this area hot. Um, in a lot of my training videos, I disable the AI's ability to actually launch the missiles. Um, but in this situation, I wanted you to see it because I knew that was what was going to make this uh, ability to switch the antenna valuable to you. Um, don't make the same mistakes that I kept making. Don't forget to come in here and hit the weapon button and select the slam. That way you get that station. So you notice the timer came up. It's still using the uh, previous target on the TGP is why we got all that information. Okay, um, and if you guys have any questions or comments, as always, leave them in the fields below. Be sure to hit that like and subscribe. It really helps me out. 
um, and then hit that bell for notifications of future videos. That way I can continue to help you out. I hope you guys have a wonderful 4th of July weekend. Please be safe. Don't do anything I wouldn't do. Trust me, that doesn't leave much. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care, guys.